this was me at the peak of my dirty bulk, almost 220 pounds and close to 20% body fat. 60 days later, and I'm down to 200 pounds with just 11% body fat while adding lean muscle mass, according to my body composition test. This means I lost nearly 20 pounds of body fat in 60 days without doing much cardio, without the use of PEDs, and even enjoying a few cheat meals per week. Here's how I did it, but first, we need to rewind 60 days to Krispy Kreme Donuts. That's me, addicted to literally the worst food imaginable. Sugar-coated, double-glazed, trans fat, aka the Krispy Kreme donut. I've been eating them almost every day post-workout now for a month, as well as many of my other favorite dirty bulking foods. No wonder my physique was starting to resemble Homer Simpson and I got fat at the speed of sound. To make matters worse, I justified that it was okay because spiking my insulin post-workout would help me build more muscle, I told myself. I was just doing a dirty bulk. But what's the point of spending so much time in the gym if you're wildly unhealthy and taking years off your lifespan eating shitty food. So I decided to go on the shred of all shreds. I call it the superhuman 60. And you would be very surprised what your body can do when you follow my five step system for 60 days. The five C's of being a shredded cunt. When you are trying to get more shredded than Swiss bank account statements during a divorce, there's basically two levers that you can pull. You can move more or you can eat less or you could do both and literally double the speed of your body transformation, which is why my morning routine is I will wake up, I'll do about mm, like two or three minutes of fasted cardio in bed with my wife and Judy. Then I'll get out of bed and I will head to the kitchen for meal number one. Now, this is not my first shredding rodeo. I know that if I eat between say 2,600 and 2,800 calories a day, I'm going to get shredded at the speed of sound. And that is exactly why I had this transformation. Now, as you can see, I'm a psychopath. So I literally kept track of my diet here in a spreadsheet, but you don't need to worry about that and go to that extreme. Just literally eat what I tell you to eat. I have a cup of cream of rice. I have three eggs. I have lemon salt water. So it's like three, 350 calories. It's gluten-free, it digests really easy. I promise you this is by far the most boring meal the day it is only uphill from here I follow the greatest diet in the history of mankind, the superhuman diet. And I truly believe that. The rules of this diet are so simple. Basically 90 to 95% of your food choices are gonna be the healthiest foods in the world and the best quality protein sources. The other five to 10% is gonna be when we have a case of the buckets. It's gonna be amazing. You wanna eat lots of high volume so you stay full without too many calories. Now, when it comes to fat loss, everyone always goes for supplements. They wanna know what supplement they can take and boom, it's a magic pill. They strip off 20 pounds of fat. Now, I own a freaking supplement company and I will be the first person to tell you that unless you have your training and your nutrition dialed in, do not start taking a bunch of supplements. But I will tell you guys what I took on the 60 day transformation. So I took Superhuman Burn, my company's two-in-one fat burning pre-workout. I took a nighttime supplement, which I'll show you at the end of the video and I took superhuman protein just to get in my protein quota for the day. All right, consistently training to get shredded. This is some important shit. So we gotta have a little sit down talk. Guarantee you 60% of the time, this stuff will work every single time pay very close attention. Now, I don't believe in planning out my splits for the week and here's why. If you feel up for it, you wake up, you feel great, you train. I believe in training. So if I wake up and I typically will train in the morning and I feel really good, and even though I've trained the previous seven days, I'll train an eighth day in a row. Now, if I maybe hit legs really hard, then I hit a chest workout really hard, I overworked at my work and I feel stressed and I wake up that third day and I just feel like shit, I won't train. It's very simple. So listen to your body. Now, this is so crucial because I believe in training with intent versus checking a box. Now, let's say you're on a 60 day shred. I totally believe that you could go to the gym 50 out of 60 days and not make much progress if you don't train with maximum intent and really push yourself. And what I mean by that is I believe in athletic aesthetics over like say a bro split or any other kind of training when I'm going for a transformation. Now, this is basically my mantra of training. And and how I define athletic aesthetics is basically aesthetic bodybuilding for the upper body. And then I'll train more like an athlete for the lower body, which actually coincides magically with fat loss because I'm doing things like high intensity interval training and plyometrics 
which are gonna accelerate my metabolism post-workout because I'm training my fast twitch muscle fibers. And then I hit that fourth day, that weak point day. Now this day is so critical because I don't believe in training with the same amount of volume as you progress on all your muscle groups. So for me right now, like let's say, I feel like my shoulders need to come up a little bit. So I will have a fourth training day while I'll just prioritize volume and intensity on two or three weak point muscle groups. So for me, usually this ends up being, you know, shoulders and traps or it might turn into like a biceps and triceps day. I'll just intuitively go through my last three workouts. Okay, I did push pull legs. What do I feel I did not hit enough of and what needs more work? Now we have 55 grams of the highest quality protein on the planet, grass-fed sirloin steak, organic eggs with some truffle hot sauce, absolutely insane. Next, we have kiwi and organic blueberries. Gotta get those micronutrients in, some really healthy carbs and fiber to keep us full. And then we have some carrot juice in the Marty Moose Cup and some lemon water. And very important, I make sure that my wife cooks this meal naked so I can boost my testosterone. That was a joke. The two types of cardio I did during my transformation was zone two cardio. I live by a lot of beautiful parks like the one I am in right now. And I would walk for 30 minutes to 60 minutes during the first couple weeks of the experiment. Now, after that, I'll admit the weather got really cold and I stopped doing zone two cardio pretty much all together for the last 30 to 40 days of the experiment. After that, I did mostly zone five cardio, which is gonna be maximum intensity stuff. We're talking sprints, dumbbell squat jumps, activities like that. The whole point of doing cardio on a fat loss phase is you're just creating extra energy expenditure. So do it as often or as little as you like. You can lose a bunch of fat regardless, but keep in mind, the more cardio that you do, the more exercise that you do, the less you have to really restrict your calories and diet down. There are unwritten rules in this world. You don't cheat on your partner, but you absolutely do cheat on your shred diet and maybe a little bit on your taxes. And also, if your partner is Greg Doucette, totally cheat on him because can you imagine how annoying it would be married to that guy? You're a moron! Could I get a 20 count nuggets, please? Let's do uh, like four honey mustard, please, and two buffalo. And then just a regular um, fries, please, the waffle fries. Now, the whole point of tracking my calories, other than feeding my OCD and just needing to know how many calories I eat, is you can actually strategically have these cheat meals. When you have a case of the fuck it's like my boy Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if you don't track these calories, you could very easily get carried away and mess up your whole diet. But by tracking my cheat meal calories and my calories throughout the week, I can eat chicken nuggets. I can eat tacos and pizza and ice cream and literally whatever I want in moderation. I can still hit my daily calorie average. So this is a pretty typical cheat meal on my shred. I try not to get them to exceed a thousand calories. So if I'm craving something really sweet, for instance, three Three donuts is 900 calories of Krispy Kreme. This meal right here is about a thousand calories. So I find that if I have one to 2000 calorie cheat meals a week, it is actually really easy to still hit my shredding calorie average of around 2600 to 2800 a day. All right guys, so this is day number 60. So take a guess what you guys think my body fat is. We're gonna go ahead and bring this down and just lock it in. There we go. So it's kind of interesting, 18 to 20. So basically the older you get, the higher your like average body fat goes. Yeah. So here is your report. So we're at 14.3? Yes. So I have a feeling mm -hmm. N-body will say I'm like nine. I'd say you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're probably right. Do you even measure my height in there? Yes. Yeah, so the height and the weight are pretty much what uh, the time uh, that you'll be tested for. So I thought this was really interesting. I got a DEXA body scan, which is supposed to be like the most accurate one, then also an in-body scan. And it was very interesting. So I was actually 14.3% body fat on the DEXA scan. Now the in-body scan had me just over 11%. So there's actually about a 3% difference between the two scans. But according to the in-body scan, I did actually gain lean muscle mass from day 60 compared to day one while losing a ton of body fat so really successful shred so high volume eating is the key to get shredded this is my dinner it's actually very satisfying because what i do is i take spinach leaves sometimes like romaine or another kind of lettuce shredded carrots toss some peanuts in there these are like gluten-free croutons so amazing 
organic pumpkin seeds, and then I'll throw in 40 to 50 grams of rotisserie chicken from Flex Pro Meals. I love Flex Pro Meals. I actually partnered with them recently, and I don't partner with many companies, but you can actually save 40% using code Troy. So this bulk protein right here is only like $8 on their website. With code Troy, I believe it'll be like $5, $5 and change. They have steak, they have chicken, they have bulk carbs, even have pre-made meals. So this just makes it so easy. I found these two brands here. This is California Pizza Kitchen, two tablespoons only 70 calories and this is two tablespoons only 50 calories so my rule of thumb is the salad dressing that you pick out needs to have under 100 calories per two tablespoons and then last but not least whatever however many calories I have left I usually satisfy it with some dark chocolate so the last and most important C god damn it stop stressing because cortisol is a fat storage hormone both mental and physical stress can attribute to more cortisol so be mindful of not feeling overtrained as you progress on your shred now obviously you guys are trying to go to the gym as much as possible because you feel like it's going to correlate to fat loss which you're correct more energy expenditure equals more calories burned equals more fat loss but if your body just feels like like you wake up and you just feel like you hit a brick wall it is actually counterproductive productive to go to the gym that day because more cortisol your body is just not going to be burning fat efficiently like you need now sleep is key less sleep equals less fat loss but keep in mind that this is also very genetic i have met people who look amazing and they train really intensely and some of them are even natural and they can just get by on five hours of sleep now me personally i always need eight to nine hours of sleep and i do sometimes take a bedtime booster i take my company's superhuman sleep products so this just gives me some melatonin, some GABA, some crucial amino acids and electrolytes. So I find when I take this product that I just fall asleep quicker and I have higher quality REM sleep because I know this because I wake up and I have these crazy dreams almost every single time I take it. Now, it's very case dependent. I would say nine out of 10 people respond really well to sleep supplements, superhuman sleep specifically, but not everyone is going to. There might be that one person who just doesn't respond. I've had people tell me the opposite. They take it and they can't go to sleep. So my experience on it is very good. If you guys want to try it out, of course, you can find it on alphalion.com. Now, I am a huge advocate of not going on technology, phone or computer within like 30 minutes to an hour of going to sleep and don't do anything stressful in bed. So if performing and pleasing your wife or girlfriend or partner is very stressful, maybe consider don't doing it. It's kind of like that old saying, the less you give, the better you will live. Just remember guys, you're going to die. Try not to stress. Did you miss the first two episodes of Becoming Superhuman? Shame on you. Go watch it now and tap the bell. Got an epic idea for an upcoming video? Comment below and if I pick your idea, you're going to win a lifetime of satisfaction of knowing you helped a complete stranger on the internet.